It's good to be back. Back home. <laughs> sure is a big adjustment after living in L.A. for so long. Yeah, you must miss your boyfriend a lot. Is he coming out to visit you soon? Marty, I oh. doubt it. Things between us are pretty much over. He just doesn't want to get married and settle down after being burned the first time. So I guess my deciding to move back home gave him just the out he was looking for. Oh, come on. I don't buy that for a second. You give the guy a little time, he'll start missing you. No, that's what I'm saying. I don't think he's going to be missing me. But you know what? There are plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> and while I'm waiting for Mr. Wright to swim on by, I intend on channeling all my energies to M&A. So you guys at Walsh had better watch your backs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for the warning. In fact, I've got a big powwow with Lily in the morning. Oh, I hope she's heard from Holden by then. Because if she hasn't, she's not going to be in any mood to talk about business tomorrow. I can't understand what could have happened between Holden and Lily that would just make him take off like that. He's always struck me as such a kind-hearted, even-tempered guy. Yeah, well, there's a lot more going inside Holden's head than meets the eye. I think losing this baby affected him a lot harder than he's letting on. Even to Lily. He feels things very deeply. So All of which make him such a wonderful guy. It's nice. It's just nice that there are no hard feelings between you guys. Yeah, well, we realized pretty quickly that our marriage was a big mistake. One in a very long line of them, I'm afraid. Well, you know what they say about a watched pot? Yeah, you're right. I should get away from that window. <sighs> Listen, I don't want you to feel you have to stick around here. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm staying. And besides, someone has to stick around and give Holden what for because you're not going to do it. Because you're going to run into his arms the minute that he comes through that door. <laughs> you bet I will. Oh, Lily. You know what? You know, you don't have to be scared anymore. I mean, he left that message. But right, he's okay. But I'm, a, I'm afraid that nothing is going to be the same between us again. I, it's, everything was so perfect. We had a beautiful wedding, and then we found this wonderful old house, and I got pregnant so fast. And, and then all of a sudden, I lost the baby, and, and now we had this fight. And it's, it's just, it's unraveling. It's... it's Well, it's not. I mean, it, it may seem that way, but it's, it's not. I mean, you had that miscarriage, and it was, you know, an unlucky break, and you didn't talk about your feelings. You didn't communicate, and now you've learned from that, right? And it's going to make your marriage stronger, and you're going to have those six kids that you've dreamed about. <laughs> Thanks. I needed to hear that. Oh, I didn't even hear him come in. Yes, darling, I'm sorry. It's just me. No word from him? Oh, darling. Look, I know you said you didn't want company this evening, but I just hated so much the thought of you out here all by yourself. finished dissecting the temporal lobe. There's a lot more damaged brain tissue here than I anticipated. How much of his memory do you think he'd be able to retain, Dr. Sussman? We're not going to know that till he's through recovery. Whatever loss he does sustain may be only temporary. The brain has an incredible capacity to regenerate itself, but considering the amount of tissue I've had to remove, I'm afraid... Oh, doctor, his blood pressure is still dropping. All right, out of time. We've got to close. We've done all we can for you, John Bell. The future now is in the hands of the higher power. Brought to you today by Crisco. Cooks who know, trust Crisco. I didn't 
it's wonderful that so many of, of Holden's family have been over to visit with you. I just felt bad thought of you being out here alone. And by the way, darling, <laughs> if I had seen Holden's car in the driveway, I had already instructed Fenwick, turn around, take me home. Don't apologize for being here, Mother. I'm grateful. I really am. Hello? Hi, Ellie. No. No, I, I don't want to talk along because I want to keep the line open. You know, in case. Look, the time has come to take matters into our own hands and do something about this situation. There cannot be any other explanation other than that he's had an accident. So what I want to do is I have some very good private detectives working for Worldwide. I, I, what I want from you is, would you back me up if I suggest it to her? Yes, yeah, I will. Well, Kirk and Ellie are going to keep their line open in case Holden calls there for, for some reason. God, why hasn't he called me? Why hasn't he called me? It's been six hours since he left that message to M&A. Darling, why don't you come and sit down? Oh, hold on. I want you to make a look at me. All right, that's two sodas with lime. Great. <laughs> Talk about energy. Yes, he's certainly sorry not lacking in energy, although sometimes I think we might get him in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> what kind of trouble? Oh, at the office. I don't know, I get the impression from Connor that, well, maybe he has a tendency to bite off a little more than he's ready to chew. I remember something Lucinda told me once. If you've got to choose between a guy who's really hungry and wants it all, mm -hmm. and a guy who's satisfied with what he's got, Always choose the hungry one. You'll get a lot more for your money. Oof. Is that why you're considering hiring him at M&A? He told me you guys talked about it. Well, we talked. But I'm not in any position to offer him a job at this point. But I've got to talk to Lily. Well, I don't think Lily would go for it. Not after the way he and Connor took over Walsh and Lucinda last year. Well, you never really know, Courtney. Sometimes the rules in business are a little more elastic than the rules we try to live by in the rest of our lives. <laughs> Here we go. Great. Oh, I can't believe it's midnight already. You know what? I'm, I'm not even ready to turn in yet. I got an idea. Why don't we go back to the Yacht Club for another swim? Oh, the whole place no, for no, I'm not the Yacht Club. I work there all day. Okay. I'm a little crazy. I'm a little tired. 86 the Yacht Club idea. How about this? Take a drive out the Luther's Corners and sneak a dip in the Snyder Pond. What do you say? Now, that is a truly inspired idea. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and while we're up there, we can uh, see if Emma's up. And if she's not, well, we got to find out what's going on with Holden. Great. Then it's settled. Great. Super. I'm going to get my suit, and I'll see you guys in a minute. Feelings for Hutch? Are you crazy, Kira? Look, I work with the guy, that's all. He had nothing to do with my leaving, or with my choice to stay on here either. Rosanna? I thought I might find you out here. What are you doing? Something that I've wanted to do ever since the first time I laid eyes on you. <laughs> Rosanna, it's time that we stop playing all these silly games and we're honest with one another about how we really feel. Rosanna, I want you so much. I want you and I love you. I love you love more than me. I ever thought that I... You don't even know who I am. You're right. I don't know who you are. But I do know who you are inside. And I know how I feel about you and how you feel about me. And if you're really honest, then you'll admit that that is all that really matters.
I thought I might find you out here. Rosanna? Are you okay? Hi, who are you talking to? Oh, hi, Rosanna. Listen to me. You're one of the lucky ones. Look at all that you and Lily have been through together. I mean, your love's gonna get through this. A love like that can get through anything. I know it. I wish I had it. I almost had it with Caleb. Blew it. What about Ron? No, it's not the same thing. Julie, but I woke up and you were gone. What's wrong? Nothing. Just couldn't sleep. I think we both know why you couldn't sleep. You want to sit down and talk about it? Yeah, maybe we should. Look, I know you think I'm being unfeeling, insisting that you cut your ties with everyone back in Oakdale, but I really believe it's best for us. Every time you go to visit, when you come back, it's like you've left a part of yourself behind. And there's this distance between us. I know it's not coming from me. Ron, you, I think the truth is that you're still not completely over Caleb. That's not it. I've told you over and over again that Caleb is marrying Angel. And I'm not Caleb's talking about gonna... Caleb's feelings, Julie. I'm talking about yours. Well, you're the one I'm marrying. Doesn't that mean anything to you at all? I thought it did. But now I'm not so sure. It's not just Caleb. Andy and Lisa are back in Oakdale, too. Andy is a constant reminder of the baby you had to give up. And look, the bottom line is all of those people are part of your past. And when you moved in here with me, you told me you wanted to leave your past behind. And you've got to leave it behind if we expect to have any kind of future. You're really handing out the ultimatums tonight, aren't you, Ron? No, I'm just telling you how I feel and what I won't settle for. But the choice is completely up to you. Well, I've at least got to call Ivan and let her know that Holden was here today and he's driving back, so Lily's not worried sick Julie, about him. Julie, Julie, I mean a clean break. I mean it. Hello? Oh. Yes, Julie's mentioned you. No, no, it's not too late. We're still up. But I'm not sure Julie can come to the phone right now. Hold on. It's Scott Eldridge, Lisa Mitchell's son. He says he's in town on business, and he's wondering if he could see you while he's here. Oh, can I at least talk to him, please? You tell me. Like I said, it's your choice. Tell him that I'm tied up for jobs for the next few days and, and I can't see him. Yeah, Scott, sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, I'm afraid Julie won't be able to see you while you're in town. She's been very busy lately. I think it's time that I gave you an apology. For what? For some very unkind things I said to you during Gavin's trial. Barbara, you don't need to apologize to me. I know what kind of strain you were under. I know you wanted to believe that Gavin was innocent. And anyone in your position would have. Well, any illusions I had about his innocence are certainly shattered now. I know what a cruel and vindictive man he really is. Aye, vindictive. I don't know if I told you this, but I interviewed him in Hillsborough during his second trial while the jury was out. And he told me some things that you would not believe. He had a, a whole lot of bad things to say about anyone he ever knew in Oakdale. In fact, some of the things he said were so ludicrous, I began to think he'd been driven right round the bend. Did he say anything about me? No. Most of his venom was directed at Daryl. He actually suggested that Daryl is the one who killed Carolyn, and that uh, Daryl set Gavin up to take the fall. Excuse me, I don't want the baby to wake up. We can... 
Hello? Barbara, it's Daryl. Have you heard anything from Franny? No, she's not home yet. No, she isn't, and I'm going out of my mind. You know, I, I called Andy, I called Nancy, I even went by Bob and Kim's skin to see if she was there, but the house was dark. They, you know, I, I, I hate to even say this, but do you think it's possible that Gavin might have called her and told her the truth about Jennifer? That's why she left so suddenly? Oh, oh, Rosanna, I'm gorgeous. surprised you're still out here. You usually make a fast exit Thanks. when someone else shows up. Well, I guess I used to feel like I didn't belong out here, but... Now that I'm going to be living at the house of Mrs. Snyder for the summer, I feel like I have just as much right to be here as anyone. Right, Hutch? Oh, well, abs yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you, well, you've always had the right to be out here, and I'm glad that now, you know, you finally, you finally feel that. Um, I tell you, it's a, it's a beautiful night, isn't it? It's so clear, you can almost see every single little star. <clears throat> Rosanna, you poor thing, you got to get up early in the morning. Got a lot of hard work to do. Yeah, well, Hutch has to get up even earlier than I do. <sighs> yeah. Don't remind me. Um, you know, Tess, I, I probably should take you back to your Aunt Barbara's pretty soon. Well, look! Uh, whole gang's hey, here! Hey! You mind if we join you? Not at all. The more, the merrier. You know, uh, team, right? you two probably haven't met. Emily Stewart, this is Rosanna. It's Rosanna C. Uh, she'll be working here this summer. Emma told me. Nice to meet you, Rosanna. You too. Um, has Emma heard anything from Holden? No, he's not back yet. Yeah, Lily's going crazy. Well, being the gentleman that I am, I'm going to allow you ladies to use the changing facility first. Oh, I'll take you off into the woods we the go. The woods. Uh -huh. I've changed many times in these woods, but not tonight. Tonight, I came prepared. Put my suit on underneath my clothes before we left. Oh, I can't wait to feel the water against my skin. <laughs> More tea, no, darling. Brothers. There's not oh, any word yet. I know. You need something to eat. I'll make you a sandwich. <laughs> That'll make you laugh. You do need to eat, darling. Well, I, I uh, Emma heated me up some soup earlier. Oh, good. Well, wonderful. I mean, there's absolutely nothing left for me to do that the Snyders haven't done. Mother, please don't turn this into a contest. I didn't ask the Snyders to come over, and I'm trying... I'm not trying to exclude you. Okay, bye. Listen, I'm sorry for tying up the line. Don't worry about it. Dear, I, I have a suggestion. Now, please, would you just listen to what I say before you make any objections to it? What is it? I would like to hire some private detectives. I have some good ones working for Worldwide. I want them to go out and start looking for Holden. Please, please do that. Why would you think I would object? Well, I just... Great! One, and they're very discreet, so you don't have to worry about that. But they'll have to know things. I mean, they have to go know the license number of the car, the vehicle identification number, his credit card numbers. We, we keep lists of that in the strong box. I'll go get no, it. No, Dada, sit down. I'll get it. Tell me where it is, and I'll get it. Uh... It... Uh, in the shelf, uh, in the closet, in the den. Okay. You see? There's something that I can do for you that no one else thought of first. <laughs> She's frustrated. You know, I really think you should lie down for a while. I can't. I can't. I can't go into that bedroom. That big old brass bed there, that was... It meant a lot to Holden and me, and... All right, I have an idea. Why don't you let me make up the guest room? Hmm? Okay. from the bones. The day we closed on this place, I told them how much in love we were and how many obstacles that we had beaten to get to the altar. They were so impressed. 
They decided to give it to us as a wedding present. You're kidding me. Said they started out as husband and wife in this bed over 30 years ago. And that they hoped it brought us the same happiness it brought them. Hmm. Of course, I should be upfront with you about something. It did bring them six kids. Mm. <laughs> oh, Alden. Please, please come home to me. Please. The steroid should reduce the swelling. It's going to be at least 18 hours before he regains consciousness. At that point, we should be able to assess his loss of memory. Those two policemen are still outside. They want to ask you a couple of things before they turn in their report. I just hope they'll somehow be able to find out who he is or where he's from, because we can't be sure he'll ever be able to tell us now. Nurse, if there's any change, have me paged. Yes, sir. Continue with part two of As the World Turns in just a moment. And now, part two of As the World Turns. Well, I still don't understand why I couldn't at least talk to Lisa's son. I mean, it's not like there's any harm in talking to the man. Because once you talk to him, you'd start thinking of Lisa. And then the next thing, you'd be on the phone to her, and then you'd be calling Andy or the Snyder farm. you make farm. it sound like it's a crime that I care about these people who were so good to me. Julie, we've been through all this before. Look, I know you don't love me the way I love you. Yet, anyway. You've been open about that, and I've accepted it until now. Because I know I can make you happy. Give you what you need. And I wanted to believe that if I gave you enough time your feelings for me would grow. I want that too. You know I do. And I, I, I've been trying. Julie, then don't Just... you see? If that's what you want. If you want the kind of life I'm offering you. A man who genuinely loves you. Then you have to be willing to make some sacrifices. And I really don't think that what I'm asking is such a big sacrifice. Do you? Come on. Come back to bed. I'll show you how much I love you. Why don't you go on without me? I'll be in in a little while. I promise. All right. But don't be too long. This, it's always like it's the first time. I, I feel things I've never felt before. hotel tonight to a friend of mine who's in from out of town. I just wanted to check and see if he'd registered. The last name is Snyder, S-N-Y-D-E-R. Holden? He... He never checked in. 
Okay. Thanks a lot. Oh, boy. Holden must have driven straight back to see Lily. Hope he's okay. Well, thank you for sharing all of your wedding plans with me. <laughs> well, we wanted to share them with you because you've always been so supportive of us from the very mm -hmm. beginning, along with Tom and Margo. And as you know, not everyone has. So it was important to us. I know you don't want the phone to wake up the baby. <laughs> right, so we're out of here. All right. Well, all right. Uh, thank plan you. to come in for, a, for an appointment, okay? Okay. All right, all right. Hello? Oh, I'm so glad you called. I've been thinking about you ever since I kissed you goodbye. Yes, I know. I talked to Tom and Margo, and they said that you were on the Cape. Are you back in Chicago now? Good. Is everything all right with the Harpers? They don't suspect. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You just be careful around them. Yes, as a matter of fact, I did speak to Daryl, and we agreed that... He should tell Franny the truth, and he went home to tell her, and, and she'd taken off somewhere. She hasn't been seen for hours. I don't know where she could be. All right. All right, anywhere, anytime, you just tell me, all right? Please, take care of yourself. Okay, I will. I love you. Bye-bye. Jessica and Duncan let me in on their way out. Franny's not home yet. No, I was hoping maybe that was her on the phone. No, 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 it was just a friend. Oh, really? Who was it? It was an old friend. It was no one you know. Just an old friend, huh? Yes. Are you sure it wasn't Franny and she asked you not to tell me? Daryl, look. I want this thing out in the open as much as you do. You're right. You're right, Barbara. I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening to me. I'm turning into such a paranoid about this. I, where the hell is she? Look, I hate to say this, but maybe if Gavin did follow up his letter with a phone call to Franny and he did tell her about Jennifer, she had... Had to get away from the two of us no, to go somewhere to think. I don't think so. You know, I checked with Colin Freight again. They're positive that she didn't receive a phone call before she left the house. She did make a call, but I don't think she called Gavin. I mean, you can't just pick up a phone and call an inmate in prison well, just like that. Well, maybe we're getting worried for no reason at all. Maybe she went to see a friend and didn't leave a note. Barbara, she's been gone for hours. I could just kick myself. You know, I knew something was bothering her when I got back from Switzerland, but I was so preoccupied with other things. I, I didn't press her. God, who knows what sort of lies Gavin wrote turned that letter. I mean, what sort of sick accusations he made about me. Barbara, what if Franny believes any of it? shifts, which is a lot, but I can't really complain because the tips are great. Mm. I wish I'd been able to get a job over there with you. Too. Sure would make my life a whole lot simpler right now. Oh. You guys see the big dipper? Isn't it great? Where? It's up there, right there. I tell you, that Emily's a fantastic swimmer, huh? Yeah, I saw you watching her. Your eyes nearly popped out of oh, your head. Oh, come on. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, what kind of glasses are you going to be taking in the fall, huh? Uh, well, actually, uh, I may not be going to school this next semester. Hodge, I hate it when you talk like that. Well, it's true. Uh, I mean, see, Link, I don't know if Link will be able to afford to pay my tuition. Well, instead of living in all this uncertainty, why don't you just give Link a call down on Waco and ask him point blank? Yeah, well, that may be your style test, but it's not mine. <sighs> Oh, I cannot believe that I let you beat me. I demand a rematch. Oh, give me a second to catch my breath and warm up. Whew. I wonder what time it is. Oh, it's got to be near one. Oh, God, I hope Holmes back by now. I just hate to think of him and Lily having problems after everything they've been through together. Yeah, I can never figure Holden out. 
He had a top position at Walsh, a seat on the board, and then one day he up and announces that he's going to resign to be a farmer. I mean, does that make any sense to you? Well, from what he told me, he just didn't feel comfortable playing the corporate game anymore. Why? He was good. I think that's the problem. He was almost too good. Being in that whole atmosphere, all the competitiveness, I think it just brought out a side of him that he didn't like very much. Yes. And I think he thought it might end up hurting his relationship with Lily. It still doesn't make any sense to me. I'm not saying I completely understand it either. But maybe that says more about us than it does about Holden. I'm gonna go grab a towel and warm up by the fire. Oh, hey, sweetheart. Hi. Staying fast. Well, maybe you just need to be revved up a little bit. What's the matter? I'm tired. I want to go home. Hey, you guys, come join us. Yeah. Oh, it's a great night. Come on. Woo. <laughs> oh, so. Good. All the lights in the castle are off. What are you doing? Well, I thought we might go down by the river for a skinny dip. <laughs> you think I'm going to get undressed up here and walk butt naked all the way down to the river? Aye, and very slowly. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, why not? What's the matter? Look, all the lights are off. The staff and the kids are in bed. And what's this sudden attack of modesty? I mean, you would call this spot. Well, we have it all to ourselves. We had it all to ourselves once before when we made love here. You remember that, yes, don't you? Yes, yes, yes I remember. you might. And I remember thinking that we were tempting fate, and I just don't think we should chance it again. <sighs> all right. All right. As you wish. We'll wait till we get down to the river to get Buckney. <laughs> you know, McKechnie, I think you're absolutely crazy sometimes. I am crazy. Crazy in love with you. Our wedding is getting very close. Oh, too close. I don't know how I'm going to have everything together in time. But you will, as usual, with great grace and style. Now, let's head down to the river for a little Wait, hold on. What's this, a sudden attack of modesty? <laughs> Not bloody likely. I just thought it might be prudent to cover the sign we put up for the kids. I never noticed a sign. What's it say? Positively, no swimming without proper attire. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you should hear from Franny, please call Daryl or me. It doesn't matter what time of night. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. Uh, yes, actually, he, he called just before Daryl got here. He's fine. I will. I will. Thanks. Lisa hasn't heard from her either. I can't believe this is happening. I mean, everything is coming apart at the seams. Everything that I... Everything. What else is going on with Nothing, you? nothing. Darryl? It's Barbara, something I have to just work out on my own. Gavin actually suggested that Daryl killed Carol, then purposely set Gavin up to take the fall. Barbara. Barbara. Look, I, I need to use your phone. I want to check in with the call. Yeah. Carl, it's me. Has Mrs. Crawford come home yet? Well, have you heard from her? Oh, well, look, I want you to wait up until I get home, all right? What? What? Well, when did she call? Uh-huh. Well, what'd she say? Right, right. Okay. L uh, Carl, listen, uh, why don't you just tear that message up? No sense in leaving it on the pad now that you've given it to me. Right. Uh, well, if she calls back again, just tell her I'll be in touch. Right. Thanks. No word from Franny? No, uh, look, I, I gotta go. R call me if you hear from her, all right? Okay. Thanks. Maybe Hutch can't see through you, Tess, but I can. I know you've been jealous of me since the day I started working here, but I promise you I'm not in the least bit interested in your boyfriend, so you can just drop all the little barbs and innuendos, okay? Well, look at you sitting out here. Yeah, just enjoying the night. It's really pretty out. I was surprised to see Daryl leave when, when Hutch brought me home. Oh, yeah, well, he just stopped by to say hello. Yeah, is, is something wrong? No, honey, why would you ask that? Oh, I just know last time that Daryl came by, you were really upset. You didn't want to see him, and Tess, now... Tess, we just... 
had a little misunderstanding between us. That's all. Okay. Why don't you just forget about it, okay? Listen, I'm going to um, go up to bed, but if if Daryl should call or if he should stop back here, you come wake me up, okay? Okay. I really need to talk to him. Okay. Good night. Good night. I wish you were here right now for me to talk to you. God, I'm so confused about so many things. <laughs> what am I saying? If you were still alive, I would never even left home in the first place. Who's there? It's just me. Oh, you scared me. Did you think I was a bear? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad that you're here anyway, because I think that it's time we had a talk. Rosanna. About what? Well, you know, I think that it's time that we were both honest with one another. I can't believe you didn't freeze to death in that bikini. Oh, <laughs> on a top down, even. <laughs> well, a hot night like tonight. Remember, I'm from L.A. People practically live in their swimsuits out there. Oh. Well, um, how about a cup of coffee or a glass of wine? Evan. What? Baby, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. So? So, I don't know about Emily, but I'm kind of exhausted. Do you guys want to stay up? Go ahead. I'll see you. No, I'll, I'll walk you. You coming? Oh, no. You guys go ahead. I got to get something out of my glove compartment. All right. Come. See you in the morning. Oh, and thanks again for including me tonight. It was lots of fun. Anytime. Bye. Hello, Emily. Daryl, what are you doing here? <sighs> okay, Andy. I admit it, I don't love Ron the way I loved Caleb. But Ron loves me, and he's been really good to me. Maybe I don't have the right to expect anything more. The bed seems so empty without you in it. I swear, Julie, you are the sexiest woman I've ever known. Listen, about that call, I was when I was calling the hotel earlier. When you Let's not talk the anymore no, I wanted... about it. No, I know how worried you were about Holden. But <sighs> from here on in, either part of you is going to be in Oakdale living in your memories, or all of you is going to be with me. And if you're with me, Julie, I guarantee you, the sky's the limit. To prove that to you, I've decided that tomorrow I'm going to whisk you away to the most incredible romantic vacation you've ever dreamed of. Where? Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a surprise. But believe me, you're going to love it. All right. Well, maybe we should get some sleep, huh? Hmm? Sleep? Who needs sleep? Is there anything else, any other information you think you need? that I am in right. my own living room listening right. to my mother talk right to away. private detectives Discreetly. to find my husband? This is just unreal. I know, I know. All right, my sweetheart. <laughs> They're on the job. Thank you. Oh, I wish I could say it was my pleasure. My pleasure would be if that young man would walk right in the door and I'd give him a piece of my mind. You want me to put those back? Please. Okay. And I will take this into the kitchen. Promise me that no matter what curves we get thrown in life, you'll never forget this. You and I are a part of each other. We always have been, and we always will be. And that means that nothing or no one can ever come between us. Ever. Oh, I'm trying to believe that. Oh, I hope you do too.
How soon till he regains consciousness? Roughly 18 to 20 hours. Hmm. Well, I was going to take a picture of him to circulate, but in that condition, I'm not sure his own mother would recognize him. The only way we're going to find out who he is is if someone comes to us and asks about him or if he tells us himself. So as soon as he wakes up... Officer, he may not be able to give us that kind of information when he wakes up. What do you mean? We had to remove a great deal of brain tissue to save his life. And the operation destroyed part of his memory. How much, we don't know yet. But there's a very real possibility that when he wakes up, he might not even remember his own name. <laughs>